All right, so what we'll do is we'll open up the diff and see what's inside. Um, I just want to make sure, no, I don't want to open that one because that's one of them's, yeah, that, actually, no, that one's pretty good as well. One of, one of my diffs is actually wobbly. I think it's this one. Yeah, that's the one. It's got a slight wobble to it, and I don't really... Right, because the diff's basically brand new, I ordered some, some diff uh, silicone, but it hasn't arrived yet. So I'm going to do my best to try and save the, the grease. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I mean, it's... It's pretty much brand new anyway. Now I wonder if... Yeah, that's the one. Alright. I should have... Uh, the screwdriver type, but I don't. Now another thing that I was noticing... Another problem with the car is that... They Loctited the sway bars the little grub screws that hold the sway bars on they've actually loctited them and that's it's i can't take them off because i can't every time i try and unscrew the grub screw it just strips it just stripped it completely so i either have to drill those out and replace them but why they lock tighted the little grub screws on the um the sway bars i don't know why they did that so it'd be interesting to see if these diffs are actually serviceable because i've got a, i opened up the when i opened up the center diff it was not serviceable it doesn't appear because instead of using pins, they've actually pressed fit all of the little gears and stuff inside and the only way to remove them is to bash them out. So I'm, you know, it'll be interesting to see if, if what I want to do is actually possible here. Right. Almost there. Okay, here it is. What's inside? There we go. That's what I wanted to see. That's good. Okay, so so far we're looking like we're looking like a normal diff. Just want to make sure that seal doesn't get broken but that's all right I can just put that there there isn't you know there's enough uh, why are we flashing oh you know what my light batteries are going flat um, I think I'll have to go plug them in oh because they're running on batteries that flashing is just the warning to say that they're flat. Um, we're back. I got the light sorted. Now we got. Oh, whoops. Ah, well, there goes. Um, I guess I can't save that now. Oh well, I'll just have to clean it properly, and um, order some uh, diff grease, but, you know, I do have four of them, so th this is basically the one that came out of the car, and could potentially be a spear, but what I want to look at is, oh yeah, yeah. That's good. When you see that, that's good because you know you can service the the diff. 
if those don't come off it means they're pressed on and you can't service them and that just equals cheap rubbish so you know I'm pretty pleased with what so you know what's been happening with this car I'm pleased to see that at least they're not um, they haven't so they haven't cheapened out really badly on the diffs let's get that out of there get that out of there right uh, maybe should just pop out of there okay got it out it just slipped out so that's good that's it there um, so now we've got that little pin in there now what I did notice is that there's a little grub screw that goes in the the side of the plastic here and I always thought like you know oh that's uh you know it's like a little f refilling cap well it's not what it's for is for taking the pin out because if you look inside there there's no way to actually if you see the angle there there's no way for that to actually um to come out so what you have to do is push it. You can get the pin out through the hole. There you go. So that took a, a little while to figure out. Now here's the, what I want to try. I'm not too worried about all the uh, the um, the grease. I mean the the silicone oil. But what I what I do want to try is. Um, adding a shim in between there so what I'll do is so we'll grab one of these shims and then so if we put that take off that bearing and then put the shim between there and there you see how that perfectly fits on there just over that there and we'll look at that bearing And we'll put that bearing back on there. You see it doesn't give much, it's not much distance. It's only about 0 0.2 millimeters. But what it does, uh, what it does is just um, gives you just a fraction of clearance. So that this part here is not going to rub on the, 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 the inner diff housing. Um, I'll put that back on, put the pin back in, whoops, and hopefully there's going to be an arc, uh, there we go, perfect, it got in there, now I should be able to put that there, back in there put it the right way up there we go that's back in so now we've got a tiny shim in, in there and that gears we'll put that one there that way As long as that uh, center bit is facing up, you're good. And of course, this one here, that that, that little groove has to go down to meet up with that one. Uh, 
And there we go. We're back in. Now obviously if I had some if I had some diff uh, oil I could fill it back up but I don't. But I'm not actually going to use this uh, diff. This is just a one I'm using to experiment with. So what I'll do now is I'll put the little little grub uh, back in. Back on there. Do the opposite ones first. Do like that one, then jump over to that one. Then don't tighten them all the way down though. So you do that one, not tight, and then that one. That way when you screw it down you're you're balancing it as well and hopefully after I do this the balancing so this last one you want to go tight then jump across to the neck that one tight to do this one tight and then tight but not too tight because it's only it's only going into plastic so you don't want to strip out the plastic just finger tight really okay so now that I've got that there back together obviously it's got no diff oil in it but I won't be as I said I won't be using this one this was just a, uh, a test and if I do like how this has worked I will be doing it to my main ones doing this little mod putting that, that little shim in there but we'll see how it goes let's see what I did want to try is just one shim oh, just one they um these are actually hard the ZD racing shims are actually hard to find that's them there um, they don't actually sell them on any of the sites and, and if you ask for them they'll just say uh, what the guy told me is that it's already shimmed it's already good to go don't worry and I'm like well no no that's uh, no that's not right mate so they what they should do is actually put these if you do have if you need the shims I would say ask the sellers for the shims put the shims on the site so we can buy them uh, these are um, for the ZD racing but they are exactly the same as the Kyoshu uh, branded ones so you can buy the Kyoshu ones with the same dimensions and they'll work as well they're a little bit more cheaper I mean um, no not cheap uh, more expensive but um that's how you can get those that these are actually the Kyoshi ones here and the you know as you can see they're exactly the same thing these were expensive these were not so expensive so you know I've got a few spare parts and stuff to experiment with at least so we'll put this shim on this side and then hang on which way does that go goes that way you can always tell which way it goes because there's a there's an indent in here so that goes that way Hang on. yeah that's right so that goes like that and we've got the shim in there so now we've got a shim on both sides so we've got the shim on the inner diff that's helping to space the plastic away from from that there but you know the tolerance is still really really small if you can see that let me see I'll check the camera 
and just make sure that I'm getting stuff in the view. I think uh, I might have been up here with a couple of things last time. But there you go, you can see the tolerance between what I'm talking about is here. If I put my little needle thing there, it's the tolerance between there and there. You see there's almost nothing there. It's basically, like if I have a look, I estimate that to be about half a millimeter of tolerance. So even though I've stuck a shim in there, it still not enough tolerance for that not to rub on the inner diff. And if you can see, we've got quite a wobble on it. Very unbalanced. Oh well, um, this was just one one idea for for shimming it. Maybe what it needs is two of those little shims. But I don't know if it'll, it'll, it, it will actually take that. What I could do is... Uh, go back to adding a shim on both sides as well. It's a little bit harder to get in. Yep, there we go. So there's a shim on both sides. I've still got no, no, hardly any tolerance between there and there. <sighs> what a nightmare. Because any amount of friction in there is going to heat it up and shrink the plastic inward and cause it to, to rub more and wear more. So, um, yeah. Still, still got a good, a little, a bit of amount of play from the pinion to the spur, and that's all right. We want that because you don't want it hard up against the the pinion. Just try putting that part of the housing on. It's quite good. I mean, it's got no grease in it, in it. It's definitely a, a lot less uh, louder than than it was before. But I'm still not liking that tolerance. It's uh. It's just terrible. <laughs>